Hello everyone! We're not going to have a Tuesday tea today. <laughs> We're going to have... This is like a replay of Monday Bakes. We're doing a little desk training. Sit. Sit. With Bentley. Back up. Back up. I'm trying to get him to get used to sitting in this chair so he can be in more videos. Or at least... He likes sitting on or in things and he don't have a doggy bed because no other dog I've ever tried to have a doggy bed would use a doggy bed. What? There's pit beef left in there and we have biscuits. I would love that. I don't know how to make the gravy though. All right, well, okay, let me finish me recording. Okay. All right. Uh-uh, -oh, sit, sit. It's the day after Christmas I'm recording this. Bentley, focus. Now you want to shake? Shake? All right, good boy. We're doing training to get him to have some place to lay down because before Mr. Cinnamon interrupted me, <laughs> he'll say he keeps climbing onto boxes or into containers like my reusable grocery store bags. I have some hard-sided reusable grocery store bags I got from Aldi. They're amazing. They are basically boxes that are hard boxes that are collapsible and have handles love them he climbed inside of them and started chewing on the boxes so i figure if i can get him to train to stay in the chair with mama then it would make both of our lives easier when i have days that i have to record he can come in here and climb up in mr cinnamon's chair and like be a good boy like he's currently being because there's food on the desk and he's very happy for that so um like i said today is not going to be a tuesday tea video it is going to be more like a Christmas uh, recap. I also have my Monday makes in here to show you what I've been working on for the past however many days. Because right now, like, <laughs> Christmas was good. I hope you guys had a fantastic Christmas, if that's what you celebrate. Other than that, I hope you had a fantastic week. Um, I'm going to start with Christmas gifts that I got from Mr. Cinnamon, just because they relate to the channel. Um... <laughs> and I know that you guys are going to be excited for one of these gifts in particular. I'm not showing you all my Christmas gifts. I'm not on here to be braggy braggy. Uh uh, out, out. Totally thought I locked that. Little Miss Oreo's trying to sneak in. Okay, so, and then we'll, I will show you my makes. I only have three makes, but they're pretty good makes. So, first things first, I put on my Christmas list a new happy planner. I love the Disney themed happy planners. This is the dashboard design, which is not what I'm used to. So the layout on the pages is a lot different. But I like the Pixar theming. So this is what it looks like, whereas before it would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. And I had a whole line of days to fill out, whereas now I just have a little box and I have to squeeze all the information into the box. But it's my own fault. I put this planner on the list not realizing. But it's Pixar and it's super cute. Are you trying to cover up with the blanket, goofball? <laughs> he just recently discovered blankets and that he loves blankets. Hang on. But he can't figure out how to cover himself up. So he scratches and digs until mommy covers. <laughs> there, now you're beautiful. Would you like a treat? You're so cute in that blanket. Oh, no. You gotta... Are you focusing really hard? <laughs> you little boy. There you go. All right, there's your blanket. I was hoping he wasn't going to be a blanket covering dog. Scarlet has to be covered. Oreo does not care to be covered. Unless she's really, really cold. But... <laughs> it is what it is. This is an old baby blanket that I had in my stash. And I'm like, eh. The baby blankets are going to the dogs lately. It is what it is. So anyway, Mr. Cinema got me that. I was very happy with that. Um, I'm just going to have to get used to the dashboard. Kind of that. And then Mr. Cinema got me two knitting books. Hey, stay there. Stay there. Stay up there. Stay. He got me the book of knitting Disney. 
This one is an older book, and I can tell by the way it's it's designed. It's got a lot of charts, which is fine because I like working off color charts. Color charts to me are a lot easier than reading a physical written pattern. Oh, look what Juju bought me. If anybody knows Lord of the Rings, you'll know whose necklace this is. I have wanted this since she was a baby. Actually, since I was pregnant with her, I saw this necklace in a magazine and she got it for me. And like, that is just the most thoughtful thing she could have possibly bought me. I don't know if I can get any closer. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. So, her name was also, it was almost Mr. Cinnamon. Let me name her this, but I wanted to name her Arwen. Mr. Cinnamon was not having it. So, there's lots of color charts in this book and ways to turn them into garments. So, this is interesting. This is a little, um, the charts are fine. Like, I can read charts. I can put Pluto on anything. Not so good at turning it into clothing because I've never knit a sweater, which is on my goal for next year. But I figured this would be fun to practice with at least, at the very least, the color charts. Hello, Americana Mickey. <laughs> to go with my Americana Mickey ears. So, yeah, this is a neat book. And then, what a good boy. He got me this one, which is splendiferous. And I already have the first pattern I'm going to make out of this book. If I can find it, it is um, the magic carpet from Aladdin. Which if you guys don't know, I love Aladdin. Aladdin is one of my favorite Disney movies. And I know I really have not told you guys that information before. <laughs> but um, when I was a teenager, Aladdin came out. Here it is. Here it is. And it's got a very long pattern to go with it. It's a throw blanket, but it's the carpet for it's the it's the rug. It's the magic flying carpet. So I need to make that. Um, Aladdin came out when I was a teenager, and I it was really one of the first Disney movies as I was becoming an adult that I just absolutely was enamored by. I love Aladdin. I used to also rent. We used to go to Blockbuster and rent video games for my sister's boyfriend's Nintendo system which was always at our house because he was always at our house and i would rent the uh, game aladdin the and now i have it for the switch so it's a hard game to beat and there's just so many beautiful really neat that's a moana shawl by the way gorgeous make that for myself and then wear it to the polynesian uh hotel at disney world <laughs> right but let's talk about how cool these villain socks are okay right right like <laughs> there's so many things in this book that color chart in the other disney book is really cool and i really look forward to using that but like the designs and the patterns in this book are amazing just i mean i was so excited that he got me this book because it was on my amazon wish list and then i would love to make these for juju because she loves tangled she also, like, her favorite movie aside from Tangled, above Tangled, is um, Princess and the Frog. Ever since that movie came out when she was a little girl, she wanted to be Tiana. And I'm all for that. Like, she loves Tiana. Tiana is her favorite princess. But they have, like, such... Look, Colors of the Wind Cowl from Pocahontas. If you're a Disney fan, this is the book for you. And you, of course, if you knit because <laughs> if you're a crocheter this book ain't gonna do you any good so yeah there's just amazing patterns in that book he also got me part two of the garth brooks anthology now i have all three of those set i don't have room on my desk <sighs> almost have an avalanche now another thing i got for christmas for mr cinnamon if you guys recall if you've been around for a long time this is where I keep my hooks, okay? This is a, uh, a twirly thing that I got for, I think, $15. Yeah, exactly. It's not the price that I got it. From Tuesday morning. You can buy stuff like this on Amazon for about the same price. But it's got a Lazy Susan on it. Um, the problem is the holes are kind of small. And so I was limited with how many of my bigger hooks. Because you guys know, I use... I either use Furl's hooks... Or I use the Omi hooks. 
or I use the furls hooks. So um, it was just not, there's not enough room for all those big fat handles in there. So this is going to be scissors, um, ink pens, etc. Because Mr. Cinnamon made me a fantastic gift. And if I can pick it up and show it to you without coll collapsing everything onto the floor. <laughs> this is from my niece Hermione. I can't let it play the full song or get copyrighted, but. And then I got my little cup for my advent calendar. Mr. Cinnamon made this for me. I saw something like this similar on Amazon that looked very cheap. It looked like it was made from balsa wood. And I was like, I wish that you could make me something more like this because um, I just think it would work so much better for my my utensils, what I need. And he came through like in a big way. It still needs to be painted because he ran out of time to paint it. I have decided I want it kind of painted like maybe a very light lilac purple. But until we get around to that, it's just plain wood. Mr. Cinnamon built me <laughs> this. Okay, this drawer is amazing. This drawer is amazing and deep and got lots of room in there for my knitting needles, etc. But look how many hooks this holds. Is this not cool? I'm going to set it back on the desk because I see that you guys can see it from the desk. So, this down here is all of my this shaped hook so these all are furls but they are also let's see if i can find an omi they're also the omi hooks so the ones that are shaped like this that are the resin are down here that one's the furls those ones are down here and they fit in there very well i can see my hooks very well i thought about organizing them by size but I was like no it makes more sense to organize them by hook style so this is the resin with that bulb shaped these ones over here are wood and I have a couple of really big one um resin ones that didn't fit over here and then also my boy hooks are down here my this style hook because don't have a whole lot of those anymore I've lost most of them and then up here is my furls odyssey hooks well that's not an odyssey but that's a metal hook my Furl's Odyssey hooks are up here. And then up here are my favorite hooks, which are the magic wand shaped ones from Omi or Divot Shield. So those that's what's up here. I did get a couple new hooks for Christmas. Um, Mr. Cinnamon, he's really thoughtful. He got me a... Which one did he get me? A Divot Shield. He got me I'm trying to remember he got me what else did he get me oh little man that ain't it. see if I can find it little man got me an odyssey for Christmas which was very very sweet of him and then what was a third hook oh he got me he got me a furls alpha hook which I did not a fan of but I'm not telling him that it's beautiful but I I did a very bad review on these hooks it's beautiful um don't I don't recommend these hooks but it's beautiful so now I have the blue and the purple one. They're they're really really short. They're like really short. They're even shorter than like a regular boy hook. So because I have really big hands, it hits me here. And they're not real comfortable to crochet with. And the one that I purchased myself um This part is way, way too sharp, and when I pull it back through the stitches, it snags and it splits my yarn every time, so it hangs up a lot, so that's why I gave this one a negative review. They're beautiful. They absolutely are. And this one's not nearly as bad as this one is, but, you know, yeah, so...
they even they downgraded the packaging which I found strange like it, it was foam inside so this one's got nice foam I don't know what that was about but so yeah he also got me some tulip etimo hooks which I didn't think I would like these because there's no throat at all right here like but I practiced messing with, I crocheted last night with them I did a swatch with all of my new my new hooks and these actually aren't bad they're really short so again they hit me here um but they're not bad hooks they're not they're they have I like the way they feel they feel really soft and smooth um and I thought I would have a if you guys look there's like no throat at all there but the the cut in here helps grab the yarn so I didn't have a problem with not being able to grab the yarn and pull it through so it's just gonna take some getting used to because I'm used to longer hooks and you know but I have no problem trying to get used to something new that's you know so aside from that what have I been making where's my other hat oh it's right there so this yarn <laughs> is yarn I got from a thrift store for 50 cents it is the Sayel yarn and I know that the label is on my desk somewhere because I saved it it's the Sayel ombre yarn um, some of you had told me it's from the 70s so it's older than I am this yarn is believe it or not look how vibrant that is for being older than I am this is why I like the older yarns um, it was it's not soft it's not soft so I use premier yarn for the brim because none of this part touches my skin so um, I didn't have a problem working with it well yes I did I got a little bit of a a little bit of irritation from it rubbing um, but other than that like it was really beautifully Mr. Cinnamon I got about this far and it was looking so beautiful and I thought I was making myself just a knit like cap like a hat a beanie and Mr. Cinnamon was like you need to turn that into an elf hat I was like all right I mean I like I will but <laughs> so I made a knit elf hat I crocheted the pom-pom and put a bell in it and like I said this part is premier yarns because that's the part that's actually touching my face and my ears and I wore this to King's Dominion Winterfest I love this elf hat this is one of my new favorite elf hats it's so stinking cute you're being such a good boy <laughs> so I made this and I made it with an extra long whatever this part of the hat is because I wanted it to like you know hang down a lot some of my other knit Santa hats or elf hats were really short so the thing was like way up here which is fine but like I really wanted to go full out like all the way down to my shoulder so I did that and even if I wanted to go back there like it hangs back there and it jingles when I walk now Mr. Cinnamon also said that I'm half Waldo and half elf but I mean whatever <laughs> I said well at least you'll be able to find me so when I got done making that I had some left over and so I was like I really wanted that to be a beanie and it's a beautiful elf hat but if you noticed the striping down here is like beautiful and it spirals it spirals so it starts and it spirals all the way around the hat and it kept spiraling around the hat and it kept spiraling but then when I started doing the decreases the the striping changed which is fine for an elf hat because elf hats are not meant to be perfect you know I was like but how would it look as a regular beanie so I made a regular beanie now I've been asked so many times to do a knit tutorial for someone else's pattern on hats I, I cannot do that I've been asked a lot especially recently so what I'm working on now is a knit tutorial for a basic beanie so keep an eye out for that because I will be doing my version of a hat um, I do a very simple very simple I'm going to teach you how to make this different sizes I'm going to teach you how to do different uh, ribbings for the, the this part because this is a one by one rib and I'm gonna teach you how to make the hat and I do a very quick 
decrease round to where it just comes to a close quick. I don't mess around. I think it's a fine hat. <laughs> this is actually my favorite hat to create is my own hat pattern. So once again I used the Premier. I made it extra long so that I had room for my ponytail and then I did the quick decrease. So yeah it looks funny but there's a ponytail there. But it's a beautiful beautiful hat. So there's going to be a knit tutorial on the channel very soon to show you how to create this beautiful hat. So I made that same yarn and isn't it beautiful? Like the, it's, the striping is gorgeous. The color is fantastic. And because this is an older acrylic, there's not a lot of fuzz. Like it don't mess around. Like I already washed this one. And do you see how defined the stitches still are? They, this yarn don't play. Same thing with this one. Like the color, this yarn is over 40, over 40 years old. Thrift store fine, baby. Look how beautiful that is. It's so vibrant. It's just, it was really nice to work with. And then you guys know I've been crocheting a blanket. And I told the story about this blanket where this yarn in particular is an AC Moore yarn. And it has been at least five projects that I have frogged. I have knit it. I have crocheted it. I have made several different types of things thinking, oh, I want to make this into something. And then it didn't work out. It didn't look right. I wasn't feeling it. And I frogged it. And I frogged it. And I frogged it. This yarn, this one, this one, and the white was in, actually I think the blue was in there too, but not the purple. No, there was purple in there. Okay, so there was two skeins of this. There was a skein of this. So this is AC Moore yarn that has long been discontinued, so there's no sense talking about it. This is the hot pink premier anti-pilling everyday acrylic this i don't remember what this purple is i think this purple is a scrap ball the white was a scrap ball the blue is a discontinued color of the anti-pilling everyday acrylic and i had one skein of it so that was in there so i started off i made a circle thinking i was making a circle circular blanket and after a while, I got tired of counting my stitches going in a circle. Because when you're working in a circle, you have to count your stitches. So I got tired of that. So I turned it into a square. So it went circle to square. And then I was like, okay. Then I started doing the pink in a square. And then I started doing the purple in granny stitch. And I was like, you know what? Let's reincorporate that colorful yarn. <laughs> so I started doing... The colorful yarn so you do a row of granny stitch and then what I did is I took the colored and I put a single crochet in the center of the so like if you got a granny stitch I put a single crochet here chain three went to the next granny stitch or granny cluster and put a single crochet there and so it gave you this effect I think it's so pretty and colorful so I ran out of the purple, so I went and got this purple, which is Premier Basics. It looks pretty good. Look, like you can't, from a distance, can't tell that they're different yarns. I used up the scrap ball of white I had, the entire skein of the blue anti-pilling acrylic, the rest of the pink that I had, and then I used almost the rest of the purple. I have this much left, but I wasn't willing to play yarn chicken, so... I ended the blanket as it was and I ran out of the color yarn here so the last several rows is just straight granny stitch but is this not a cute blanket like it's so fun it's so colorful it's a pretty good size like I don't know where are my tape measures I don't know what size it is I haven't measured it This is going to go into my bucket of baby blankets that I'm keeping on stash. It's 43 and a half inches squared, so it's a good newborn size blanket. And if I want, I can always come back in later and add more colors to make it. I don't think I want to. I think it's a really good size blanket. And it's a lot of fun and it's cute. 
So, that's what I've been working on. That's what I've been making. That's what we've been doing. Um, yeah. So, I was a day late because I was tired from Christmas. Christmas was a very, very long day. It, the kids had an amazing Christmas. The um, little man was... He had a rough couple of days before Christmas. Like, I mean, rough. I think there's just too much excitement going on. There was too much stimuli in the house. And he was in he was in a bad mood he was in a really horrible rotten mood for several days and you try all the things like santa's not going to bring you any presents knowing darn well there's no way i'm going to keep him from having a christmas because he's having a bad couple of days i know that it's a sensory thing i know that like when there's so, that much going on in the house like he has a really hard time controlling himself i understand that but man it was rough on mommy and it was rough on lucas and so Christmas morning, he woke up at 4 a.m. <laughs> Mad at the world because he was over. He doesn't sleep real well. And when he doesn't sleep, he's there's like this fine balance with him. There's all his sensory issues, but then he has a real problem with sugar. So if there's too much sugar in his system, he gets very aggressive. And then um, if he doesn't get any sleep. He's very mean and cranky and ornery, which is true for all of us, right? But because of his his issues, like, it is amplified. Because he does not know how to express himself. And so, there was issues. I'm not going to lie, it was rough. And um, 4 a.m. he woke up and he went downstairs and he saw the Santa came and he was very excited. But he was exhausted because it was 4 a.m. and he only slept like five hours So, I told him, I was like, you have to go back to bed. He was not happy. He started yelling and throwing stuff and just... <sighs> so, yeah. So, Mr. Cinnamon went laid in Little Man's bed. And Little Man came and laid with Mommy. Because that's how I got him back to sleep. Is, like, making him lay next to me. We ended up sleeping until... Just after 8. He woke up a different child. <laughs> <laughs> he was angelic he came downstairs we gave him his medicine first thing in the morning gave him something to eat with his medicine he wanted a pepperoni sandwich which I was perfectly happy to give him because it gives him the right kind of sugars to sustain for a little while and it gives him the protein that he needs to help digest the medicine I mean the protein just really gives him energy without giving him sugar you know so pepperoni sandwich it was he ate three quarters of it exactly because he had exactly one quarter he like ate it in a square it was weird <laughs> it was like the bottom corner in a perfect square which i gave to bentley <laughs> and then we opened presents and um if you watch the christmas episode i think it, well one of the christmas episodes i talked about how we open one gift at a time per person so like we all get to see it lasts a longer time it's a really enjoyable experience and so little man got bored about halfway through he got his good gift and he took off to his bedroom to to play with it and he missed the whole second half of us opening gifts which is fine because keeping his attention span that long was a miracle anyway <laughs> and we sat and had a quiet opening presents the adults well juju juju's might as well be an adult she's 17 so it was really nice they all had a nice christmas and I felt like it wasn't about anything monetarily. I just felt like this year the gifts were really well thought out. The fact that Juju got me this necklace and I was telling her how her name was almost Arwen, Arwen and how like she just recently discovered Lord of the Rings. I got her the book series so that she can read the Lord of the Rings books. She got me this which is I've wanted this for so long and I didn't even know they still made it because like I discovered it like I said when I was pregnant with her <laughs> so it was really a well thought out gift and then my niece Hermione got me this beautiful Christmas ornament from Hallmark and it was a well thought out gift and the reason that is special is because she has never been able to buy presents for us um, when they lived here when they were younger, we would make sure that she bought her mom a gift, but it was never 
forced for her by anyone else but for her mom or maybe her sister and so she's never really done Christmas shopping by herself until this year and she really thought about the person and thought about the gift and it was really touching to see that so I'm gonna treasure that because it's basically like her first Christmas doing for others it's a big deal <laughs> it's a big deal um, and Mr. Cinnamon making me that box was fantastic. And Little Man get me a, a hook, which coordinated with this cool hook thing that Mr. Cinnamon made. It was just a really nice Christmas. It was really nice that everyone thought out the gifts, you know. Um, I don't feel real great about what I bought Mr. Cinnamon because he just doesn't give me like, oh, yay, excited. But I, he needed new work shoes, so I bought him new work shoes. And I really like the work shoes, but they're work shoes, you know. <laughs> So, not real exciting. I bought him a new coat, so he was warm. But, yeah. I mean, it was a nice Christmas. The dogs got some good gifts. I went to Tractor Supply last minute. Because, um, I, ha I had to wait until my YouTube paycheck come in came in. We get paid once a month. We get paid around the 20th. And so, I had to wait for my YouTube paycheck to get deposited. And it was a day late. So, I was like, I needed groceries. I needed to fill Juju's stocking because Juju filled everyone else's stocking. She asked to do the stockings. This was in my stocking. <laughs> she put candies in there and like she got a really nice ink pen from Mr. Cinnamon for work with his name on it. It's really a nice pen. So she really thought that through, you know. She had fun doing the stockings. So I was left to do her stocking. So I was like, okay, hey, well I gotta wait till I get paid. And then I like to get the dogs treats for Christmas, which is what Bentley is eating that he loves these so much. They smell so strong of dog. It says Yapple Bananas, which is supposed to be Apple Banana flavor, but they smell very strong of, like, liver. But as you can tell, like, he perked right up as soon as I touched it. So I'm going to track your supply. You're going to fall off the chair. Stay. No. 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 No, Bentley. Stay. I got them all some toys. I got them all some treats. No, I did not give you permission yet. Um, touch. All right. I got them some treats. Every toy that I bought for this dog, he ran immediately through the doggy door and put it in the backyard. <laughs> so he's got all his Christmas toys in the backyard. And it's too cold, he doesn't want to go out to even pee. So, do you want another one? You guys shake on this one. Shake. Shake. Okay, I have this one now. Shake. You're going to give me the same one again? That's fine. So, the dogs love these treats. They were kind of expensive, $6.99. But like I said, I went to Tractor Supply and got what they had. Because I did not want to go to another store. Um, I usually buy like treats and toys at Dollar Tree because my dogs destroy their toys so quickly. Um, Dollar Tree hasn't had anything for the pets lately. And I have three Dollar Trees by me and they have been like non-existent for dog treats, for toys, any of that. <clears throat> so I went to Tractor Supply. Probably spent too much but they had some good toys that they like to play with that I got them some Kong toys also because, like I said, my dogs are destructors. Like, especially this one because he's teething and Scarlet because she's got a big jaw. <laughs> so, Oreo will... She, I, I bought them... Hey, leave that alone. That's not yours. I bought them um, a lot of balls. They got a lot of balls. They like the balls. But both... Well, actually, all three of the dogs like to peel the green part off the tennis balls. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> and Scarlet, I had to get her an extra big one because she chews and then the ball, like, falls apart in her mouth because she, she's got a big jaw. And, um, I love you. Uh, what else did I get? Them? Oh, I got them. Like I said, I got Kong toys. So Kong balls. And then, um a bone with like teeth in it for him to chew on because he's teething thank you 
Now I get the other one. You're gonna chew on my finger. You want another snack? This dog is very food enthusiastic. So training him is easy as long as I have food because he just absolutely loves food. Can I kiss? Kisses? Right here. He's like, nope, I want food. Sit. No, sit. Stay. I don't want that. I don't want that. No, stay. Focus. Focus. Good boy. We had to work on his leash training the coming two weeks. Because he needs to have more leash training before we go back to his training class. Which is hard because it's so cold outside right now. But it's going to be in the 60s. It's been negative zero. It's been below zero here for a couple days now. Um, can you sit please? Sit. Bentley, sit. Sit. Thank you. It's going to be up in the 60s on January 1st. So, I mean, we're going to be spending some outdoor time. Stop, that hurts. Stop. Ah. No more. All gone. All gone. So I'm going to let you guys go. Because he's going to, he actually needs to go have his breakfast. Instead of all them snacks. Or he's going to keep scratching me. Because he's a fatty. And I need to go have breakfast myself. Because Mr. Cinnamon's in there cooking bacon. And we're going to have some leftover cheesy potatoes from last night. I don't have any more goofball. It's all gone. And from me and Benny Benny Boo Boo, we will see you in the next one. Bye guys.